Hi, my name is John Drux with LiveCalf.com doing a documentary slash commentary called Change. And it's now December 2011. And I was watching the Dylan, Dylan Radigan show on MSNBC today. And he had an attorney general on talking about an attorney general from a state and they were talking about foreclosures in the banks and how they're going after the, some of the states are going after the banks on illegally foreclosing and well I, I agree with that it's the banks aren't the only problem in this equation and, and I was part of the real estate business back in the boom Again, I'm a, I'm a real estate broker in Fresno, California, and I could have been doing loans, but I saw what was going on, and it wasn't necessarily Chase or Bank of America running around doing bad loans. It was small brokers, realtors, anyone that could do a loan was doing a loan. I didn't want to do it. Kind of like I don't want to do the short sales right now. I knew what was happening. And for those years, I was mainly a traditional seller's listing agent. I only wanted to be on the seller side. I knew some of the stuff that was going on with the buyer side. People getting the houses they couldn't afford. people doing loans that really didn't care as long as they got paid but again how is the foreclosure crisis the housing crisis how, how are you going to stop the bleeding in my opinion is it starts with how houses are being sold today Please watch my documentary called The Short Sale of the American Dream. Short Sale on LiveCallup.com. Subject to pricing needs to be removed. It's not allowed in any other product sold in the United States of America. But yet for over four and a half years, houses have been, have been allowed to be sold subject to. Those two words not only contributed to the collapse, it's prevented any type of recovery. So they're they're talking about the banks, and actually I'm gonna I'm I'm starting to document exactly how the banks operate during a foreclosure. My own, because unless things turn around for me real quick, my option on on the house I bought for my kids is foreclose. So I'm contacting Chase, spent over a hundred minutes on hold, probably talked to a person a total of 10 minutes out of the hundred minutes. Majority of them told me they couldn't help me. Finally got me to the forbearance department. Because again, I don't qualify for an unemployment program because I'm self-employed. I don't get unemployment and uh, so yes for that right there tells me there's a problem with the banks and every bank that I own money to I've already sent them letters saying I need a job let me help fix the housing market let me help keep people in their homes instead of my counterparts, I'm basically, you know, again, it gets into almost being, if you want to survive in real estate right now, you're basically being forced into doing short sales. I won't do that. I know what's going on. The banks need to get involved from the start. If they need to add people, there's plenty of people that need jobs right now. And when it comes down to it, for what the amount of money that the government's on the hook for, Maybe we work for the government. 
Again, I'm going to continue to send letters to every person that I owe money to, every bank I owe money to, saying, I need a job. Let me, let me help. Let me help fix this crisis. I also saw, I got an email from Michael Moore yesterday, and he talked about foreclosures and how people should basically refuse to leave their houses. And I'm just not so sure of that concept, because it, let's face it, if you don't pay for your house, you probably should be moving on. Nobody lives for free in this world. So, again, the banks need to get involved, involved from the start. The emphasis needs to be on trying to keep people in their homes. I've been saying this for over four and a half years now. Why is the emphasis being put on helping people walk away through the short sale? And it's not saying all short sales are bad. If it's where someone truly bought at the height of the market, they can't afford the house, maybe they were roped into a bad loan, then it might make sense, but it needs to be at the start, at the time of listing. We have a major catastrophe on our hands here. The housing market, I, I don't even want to, yeah, my, my whole life's been turned upside down by the housing market. And, and again, I know, at least I think I know how to fix it. And it starts with removing subject to pricing. We need to figure out how to stop declining home prices. I had posted something on Facebook, and someone replied, made a comment. That's a great time to buy. And have I, as I've said in previous documentaries, and you know, on the short sale of the American Dream, short sale on livecal.com. I've said that it's probably the greatest time ever to buy a house, ever. I don't care if you're 10 or 100. You combine the prices, which I contend have been manipulated low by subject to pricing, along with the interest rates being offered. It has to be the greatest time ever to buy a house, except for if prices continue to decline. But the 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 question is then, if, if the banks continue to take the losses that they are, and actually the taxpayer, because again, if history repeats itself, if the banks fail, the taxpayer bails them out. Too big to fail. How many times can the government do that is the question. How many times can the can the government bail out Freddie, Freddie May and Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? The question is, does the taxpayer want to keep doing it? I think we know the answer to that. So again, the banks, yes, the banks are the problem when it comes down to it because it's their houses. They're going, to, they're going to own a lot more houses if, they, if, it, if it's allowed to continue. But again, it gets into the banks need to be involved in the start. If they need to add staffing, there's plenty of people in this country that need jobs. I need a job. Again, I'll continue to, to include letters with the last payments I make saying, I need a job. Let me, let me work for you. Let me fix this housing mess. The emphasis needs to be on keeping people in their homes, not helping them walk away. Just like there should have been regulations in place to make sure people weren't buying houses they couldn't afford. People are the problem.
when it comes down to it. It's not Chase, it's not Bank of America. It's people that did these loans. A lot of them weren't even working for those, these banks. And a, lot of the, a lot of the worst banks, lenders, are out of business. Taken over by Bank of America. Taken over by Wells Fargo. I can't imagine your shareholders are real happy with that, though. Bank of America taking over countrywide. I have to think most of the problems that Bank of America has is because of what Countrywide was doing. Again, I, I'm a real estate broker. I could have been doing loans back in the, the heyday, I guess would be the name for it. Top of the market. But I wouldn't do it. Just like I won't do short sales right now. It's wrong. We need to set regulations in place. We need to figure out how to keep people in their homes. But it's not all the bank's fault. Again, the state attorney generals are suing the banks. When it's not all the bank's fault. The banks need to react though. They need to have proper staffing in place, and again, if it needs to be the government, especially if the government's on the hook for these, all these loans. But someone needs to do something. Because again, from what I've heard on the news, and I totally agree, is the U.S. economy will not recover until the U.S. housing market recovers. So again, John Drux, LiveCalif.com, this falls under change, but again, it, it really could be under the short sale of the American dream, short sale on LiveCalif.com, need to watch that. We need to pull together now. We need to change. Have a great day. Keep watching. Excuse me while I turn off my camera.